going on, ladies and gentlemen. It is one of what may be a few horse racing club quizzes hosted by myself, Rory Paddock, for pictureandpaddock.co.uk. For those watching live, thank you very, very much for doing so. Obviously, it's just a bit of fun. Ignore the lack of uh, social distancing in the background. Hopefully, obviously, we're all going through a bit of a tough time at the moment, but this could be something worth looking forward to. Take your mind off it for half an hour. Test your racing knowledge. So, without further ado, as you can see on the right hand side, there's a giant orange box. So, you'll see the questions appear there. I'll obviously read them out. I'll give you 10, 15 seconds per question, something like that. We'll get to question number 10. Then, we'll have a little break so you can top up your drink, nip to the loo if needs be. In that sort of five minute interval, you will see all the questions scrolling through. So, if you miss one, don't worry, don't fret, you will make sure that you've got a second chance to see them. Obviously, and I've put this in the comments already, please don't start putting the answers or your guesses or any comments that may give away the answer. Because, like I said, people might be playing this later on, people might be watching this a few days later, perhaps even weeks later. You don't need to be clicking on the video, seeing your comments, having the answers, ruining it for them. So. Um, there is only going to be 24 questions tonight, however, some are worth 2 points, some are worth 3 points, there's one question that's worth 6 points, however, you will end up with a total of 40 altogether, uh, and basically if you can get 40 out of 40, then hey presto, like I said, just to laugh, just for a bit of fun. So, without further ado, first question up, let's have a look what we've got here. Question number 1, in the last 5 years... How many Oaks and Derby winners have been trained at Ballydoyle? Now that's Epsom Oaks and Derby winners. So not the Irish Derby or any other sort of international Derby. This is just the English Derby at Epsom, the Oaks and the Derby. How many within the last five years have been trained by Ballydoyle? So yeah, in the last five years, how many Oaks and Derby winners have been trained at Bally Doyle? Okay, if you've got that question number two, folks. I'll bring that up now. Question number two. In the past ten years, have Bally Doyle trained more English guineas? So that's 1,000 and 2,000. Winners or English Oaks and Derby winners? Question two In the past 10 years, have Bally Doyle trained more English Guineas or Oaks and Derby winners? Obviously, it's going to be either option A or B, as it were, and it's one point if you get that correct. I know it's a bit Bally Doyle heavy the first couple of questions, but it will change, I promise. Okay, hopefully you've all got an answer there. Question number three. If you put the last five different, emphasis on the word different, Grand National winners in alphabetical order, A to Z, who would be fourth on the list? So if you put the last five different Grand National winners in alphabetical order, which one would be fourth on the list? So as you're all going one, two, three, I'm going back a few years now. Everyone frantically jotting down the last five Grand National different Grand National winners. I 
I know it's a bit of a tricky one, so I'll give you an extra little bit of time here. Question number four. It's in the similar vein as the last question. If you put the last five different champion chase winners in alphabetical order, which horse would be second on the list? That's question number four. If you put the last five different champion chase winners in alphabetical order, A to Z, who would be second on the list? That's the last five different winners, by the way. And that does include this year's Cheltenham Festival. Question number five. Again, I'm going to have four of these A to Z questions, so this will be question three of those four A to Z questions. Question number five. Again, if you put the last five 2,000 guineas winners in A to Z order, who would be third on that list? That's if you put the last five 2,000 guineas winners in alphabetical order, A to Z, who would be third on that A to Z list? Obviously, how are the unlikely that will get a guineas this year? So, uh, 2019 backwards. Can you get those five? And can you decipher who'd be third on that list? Question number six, and it's the last A to Z style question. This one's going to be a bit trickier. Probably one of our hardest questions of the whole quiz. If you put the last five Irish Derby winners in A to Z order, who would be fourth on the list? That was question number six. If you put the last five Irish Derby winners in alphabetical order, who would be fourth on the list? Okay, folks. Question number seven. At this year's 2020 Cheltenham Festival, there were six juvenile and novice hurdle winners. How many of them can you name? And there's a point for each one. So this question is worth six points in total. A point for each correct one. At this year's 2020 Cheltenham Festival, there were six juvenile and novice hurdle winners. How many can you name? So for this question seven, there should be six answers, a point for each. How many of those six can you work out? Thank you to all that's watching live as well.
So yeah, question seven. At this year's 2020 Cheltenham Festival, there were six juvenile and novice hurdle winners. How many of them can you name? Yeah, yeah, that's a bit better. Question number eight. Spell the name of the unbeaten Godolphin horse who won last year's Dewhurst Stakes. Correct spelling only. So, we don't just want you to answer the name. We want you to spell the horse's name correctly as well. One point for this. But only those that spell the horse's name correctly can have that point. So if you're marking someone else's paper later, have a word with them and make sure that they've spelled it correctly. I will be going through all the answers later on. I will be going through the answers on the right hand side, just as I've got the questions here. Okay, have you got that one? Question number nine. This is all about the BHA's ratings. Now, just to let you know, it's BHA's ratings, so it's UK horses only. And these ratings were correct as of the 24th of March this year. So, fill in these chasers according to their ratings. Again, UK horses only. So the likes of Album Photo aren't in this, and so on and so forth. Obviously, there at the top, we've got on 177, and we've got a surname. We've got Alt Europe 175. But can you fill in the blanks for who is rated 173, 172, and 172, respectively? A point for each. However, stipulation with this question is, if you end up with a horse that is rated 173 in the 172 box, then that is incorrect. Obviously, the respective 172 rated horses can be in either order. It doesn't really matter. They've both got the same rating. So, not only do you need to find the three horses, you need to make sure that the horse that's rated 173 is in the correct spot. So, make sure you write them in some sort of order on your answers. So, again, these are the BHA ratings as they were on the 24th of March this year. And they are UK trained horses only. Again, a point for each, possible three points for this question. Question number 10, and this is one before we have a little five minute break. Question number 10. We've just done the chasers, now it's time to do the hurdlers. So fill in these hurdlers according to their ratings. Again, UK horses only. We've got Boover Dare and Paisley Park, both rated 167. We've then got a horse rated 164 and two horses rated at 162, respectively. Again, I want you to make sure you get that horse that's rated 164 in that 164 slot and those that are rated 162 as long as they've got the right rating next to them you can have the point again with the possible three points here for question number two so question number two again filling these hurdlers according to their ratings uk horses only Bouverdere and paisley park both at the top with 167 which are the three other hurdlers rated 164 and 162 respectively that top the BHA ratings as of the 24th of March this month. Okay, now if you have missed a few of the questions, do not worry. We'll be taking a quick five-minute break. 
and I'll be straight back with you with the remaining amount of the quiz with another 14 questions to fire at you. Okay. Hello everyone, welcome back. Hopefully a quick little break there. You've been able to have a look at any of the questions that you've missed. You've been able to jot down any of the ones you were still stumped with or thinking about. Obviously we're going to have another break later on after we've done the remaining 14 questions before I give you the answers. So don't worry if you've not got one yet. It might come to you later on in the quiz. 
Hopefully you've had a little cheeky top up as well. And you've got a full glass. So without further ado, on to the next question, ladies and gentlemen. Question number 11. The next six questions are going to be all around race courses and their geography. So for each one, we're going to give you four race courses in either the UK or Ireland. And I want you to give us whether it's the most northerly and the most southerly of the group of four with a possible two points for each question. So question number 11, name the most northerly and southerly courses from this list. Cartmel, Catterick, Ripon and Thirsk. So I want two answers for this. I want one for the most northerly, one for the one that's the furthest south, with a point for each. Now make sure you obviously denote which one's north, which one's south, when you're writing these answers down. Also apologies for the lack of beard. I absolutely despise it. However, COVID-19, as we all know, hence why we're stuck indoors, can run rife with those with thick facial hair, and I've had to get rid of it. So, 10 years younger, but just not for me. <laughs> so that was question number 11. Question number 12, folks. Again, the next few questions are gonna be of the same ilk. Name the most northerly and southerly courses from this list. Carlisle, Hexham, Kelso, and Newcastle. Again, I want one for the north, most north, one for the most further south, with two points for this question. Again, that list again is Carlisle, Hexham, Kelso, and Newcastle. Which is the most further north, and which is the furthest south? Moving on, question number 13, folks. Again, we want the furthest north and the furthest south from this list. These Scottish race courses, I think, here. Air, Hamilton, Musselburgh, and Perth. Again, we want the race course that's the furthest north and the furthest south. Two points for this, if you can get both correct. Also, it's a one point. One point if you only get one. You don't need both. It's not an all or nothing question. You can have one of two and still get one point. Again, those four are Air, Hamilton, Musselburgh and Perth. Question number 14. Again, another four race courses. I want the furthest north and the furthest south from Bangor on Dee, Chester, Leopardstown, and Utopsita. Of those four, I've been to two. Well, I've actually been to three, but only one. Uh, one was actually not one I was racing on, sadly. But uh, yeah, Bangor on Dee, Chester, Leopardstown, and Utopsita. I want the most northerly and the furthest south of those four race courses. Again, two points for this question if you can get both right. There's only two more of these type of questions as well, of which the next one is number 15. Again, I want the furthest north and the furthest south from Bath. Epsom, Newbury, and Windsor. That's Bath, Epsom, Newbury, and Windsor. Can you tell me which is the furthest north and which is the furthest south? Uh, 
And the last one of these questions, question number 16. The last four on the list is Brighton, Fontwell, Newton Abbott and Plumpton. Which one's the furthest north and which one is the furthest south? Again, as I've said, two points for this question. That will probably add to your tally of correct answers so far. Now, the remaining eight questions are all name the jockey or name the trainer questions. So you're going to see a picture flash up on the screen with a face disguised. And I want you to name either the jockey or the trainer from both codes, from uh, National Hunt and Flat Racing. So I'm not, singular, I'm not singling anyone out. So... First one of that is going to be question number 17, if I can get it up here. That's question number 17. Who is that jockey? Can you name that jockey? Put that next to question number 17. As you can see there, that has changed. That is now question 18. Can you name that trainer or jockey? Question 18, can you name who that is? Number 19, can you name that jockey? Secretly disguised ever so well. <laughs> the Groucho Marks of racing, as they call him. Whether or not the racing silts give it away, the little bit of a cheek you can see. Who do you think that is? Can you name them? Okay, next one. Again, this will be question number 20. Name that jockey. Do you know who that is? Do you recognize the silks? That bit of a chin? Any sort of indication as to who that might be? And what I'd do is I'd actually give you a little bit longer because when it comes to our next break, before I give you the answers, all that'll be, I guess, uh, rotating, as it were, or uh, filtering through, will be the questions on the right. So get a good look of these jockeys now before they disappear. Because you will not see them again. Okay, next one. be question number 21 can you name that jockey or trainer
only three more questions for the entire quiz to go after this. This is question 22. 22, this is. Can you tell me who that is? Who is that that you see on the screen there? Again, like I've mentioned, you will not see these faces or these pictures again. So this is your only time to look for them. Grab the opportunity whilst you can. I'm going to give you another five seconds on this one. Question number 23. Who's that? Can you tell me who that is that you can see on the screen before you? I'd probably say perhaps one of the easier ones. Personally, I'd say that. Although, in fairness, considering I know all the answers, they're all pretty easy, I suppose. Yeah, that is question number 23. And we've got just the one more after this. So, the last and final one. Question number 24. Can you name that jockey or trainer? That is question number 24. This is the final question of the entire quiz this evening. I wanted to make it, I guess, short and sweet to an extent. See how it goes. We can certainly do more if people are enjoying it. Let us know in the comments if you want another one. To do another next weekend. See all of these jockey and trainer picture questions are worth one point each. So after these, we're gonna have a short couple of minutes break. If you have another think. Perhaps go over any answers that you've got blank, any that you might want to change. Obviously, any of the questions from question number 11 to 24, they'll be rotating whilst we're on the break. So thank you to anyone that's watching live as well. Make sure you like our Facebook page or you jump on our Twitter at PixPaddock. Give that a little follow as well. Obviously, we do more than quizzes. We... Uh, there's a five, five of us who all have our selections in the Racing Post Naps table. Uh, we do regular books, videos, podcasts, racing articles, the works. So thank you once again for your support. That was question number 24. So as it says there, that's the end of the quiz. You will have a score out of 40. So grab another drink. We'll be back in five minutes with all of the answers.
Hello everyone and welcome back. Hopefully you've all been able to nip to the loo, grab another drink if needs be, have a little look through any other questions that you were struggling with. As you can see on the right hand side, that is the answer to question number one, so it is now time for your answers. If you sat with someone doing it, swap papers, unless you're trustworthy enough to actually mark them correctly. Get stuck into this now. So, starting from the top, question one. Question one indeed was... The last five years, how many Oaks and Derby winners have Bally Doyle trained? That's English Oaks and Derby winners collectively. That is a total of five. They have trained, they have sent out five Oaks and Derby winners of the last five years. Ticker across, depending on whether or not you got that correct or not. Question number two, I asked you in the last 10 years, did Bally Doyle send out more UK guineas or, well, English guineas or English Oaks and Derby winners in the last 10 years? The answer by one was Derby and Oaks winners. They've had 10 Derby and Oaks winners in the last 10 years compared to nine Guineas winners in the last 10 years. So a tick. If you've got Derby and Oaks, and a cross if you've got Guineas. For those that are interested, they've sent out six Derby winners, four Oaks winners in the last 10 years, to five 2,000 Guineas winners, and four 1,000 Guineas winners. Obviously, that's the English equivalent at Epsom and Flat HQ in Newmarket, respectively. So, Tigger across, one point if you got that right question number three this is the first of our alphabetical order questions the last five different grand national horses horse, not grand national horses grand national winning horses obviously tiger rolls won it the last two years so we need to go a little further back the last five grand national winners were many clouds one for arthur pinot de Rey, rule the world and tiger roll that's in alphabetical order. And I was asked, asked, um, get my words out. I asked for the fourth in that A to Z list, of which that is Rule the World. Tick if you've got Rule the World, or a cross if you've got something different. And that's question number three. Question number four, the second of our A to Z questions. Again, we needed the last five different champion chase winners obviously we, we had politologue this year but Altior has won it in two seasons so we need to go a little bit further back for this one as well Altior, Dodging Bullets, Politologue Special Tiara and Sprinter Sacra those are the last five champion chase winners and I was after the second on the list for question four so in this case it was Dodging Bullets Tick if you've got dodging bullets or a cross if you've got anything else. Again, another A to Z question. I wanted the last five 2,000 guineas winners in alphabetical order. I was looking for the third on the list. We obviously had Churchill, Galileo Gold, Glen Eagles, Magna Grecia and Saxon Warrior. Glen Eagles was third on that A to Z list. So, ticking the right question for question number five. If you see Glen Eagles in that box, you see any other horse, it's a big cross. And probably the hardest question on the entire quiz. I wanted your Irish Derby winners. That's Irish Derby winners. The last five were Capri, Harzand, Jack Hobbs, the Trobe and Sovereign, and I was after the fourth on the list. So in this case, it's the Trobe. I mean, I must admit, going through this and doing the quiz, there's uh, many racing memories that you kind of forget. Or it's, you know, personally, I forgot. I mean, I was a massive Harzan fan. I forgot he actually did the uh, English and Irish Derby double, as it were. But uh, in this one, it's the Trobe. 
for question number six. Ticking the right box if you've got that correct. Obviously, big red cross if you've not got that one. Question seven. Now, question seven, you could have had a maximum of six points. The question was, at the 2020 Cheltenham Festival, there were six novice and juvenile hurdle winners. Can you name all of them? So, one for each one you get correct. Here's the answers. Shishkin won the Supreme on day one. Envy Allen won the Ballymore. Aramax won the Boodles Juvenile Hurdle. Concertista won the Dawn Run Novices Hurdle. Burning Victory won the Triumph. And Monkfish won the Albert Bartlett. Those are the six with a possible of six points. One point for each one that you were able to get down on your list. So a possible six points there for question number seven. Then you don't have to take any points off if you got one wrong. You didn't have to name the races. Literally just had to have the six names of the horses with a point for each one. Question number eight. Question number eight. I was testing your spelling. Not only did I want you to be able to name the horse who won the Jewhurst Stakes, Obviously, unbeaten Godolphin horse uh, was a bit of a superstar at the flat season last year. The horse is Pinatubo, but did you spell it correctly? Let's have a look. Answer to question number eight. P-I-N-A-T-U-B-O. Pinatubo. Eight letters. P-I-N-A-T-U-B-O. Pinatubo was the answer to question number eight. Doesn't matter if you've got the horse correct, I wanted you to correctly spell it as well. If there's an R in there, which many people think there might be, that's a big red cross. It's Pinatubo. Correctly spelled P I N A T U B O. And that is your answer to question number eight. Question number nine, with a possible of three points. This is where we have to look at the BHA ratings for British racehorses as of the 24th of March, the first of which was the chasers for question number nine. We obviously had Surname and Altior at the top, but which three horses were below? Surname, Altior, with a rating of 173, we had Santini, Lost in Translation, 172, and Clander's Oboe at 172 as well. Now with this, I did stipulate when I asked you the question that Santini needs to be in that 173 spot. If it is one of the 172 horses, that's a cross. The same with Lost in Translation or Clander's Oboe, even if you've got them on the list. If either of them you've put with a rating of 173, that's a cross. Again, Lost in Translation and Clander's Oboe, they have the same rating. It doesn't matter which order those two are in. So yeah, unless Santini is in that third spot, that's a cross for that one. And unless Lost in Translation and Clender's Oboe are in either of the fourth or fifth spots, they're interchangeable because obviously they've got the same rating. If either of them are rated on your list as the third best chaser, then that's a cross. Obviously we did the chasers there, it's one point for each one that you got correct, and obviously a cross if you didn't. Moving on to question number 10, we had the same sort of format, but this time it was for the hurdlers. We had Bouverdere and Paisley Park rated the two best hurdlers at 167 respectively. I must admit, when this came up and I did this question, I was a little bit surprised with the answers. So I wouldn't be, uh, don't be too shocked if you didn't get this. But if you did, then hats off and fair play to you. Imaginary hat. So yeah, with the hurdlers, question number 10. Bouverdere and Paisley Park were rated at 167. The third best hurdler, according to ratings, is If the Cap Fits. If the Cap Fits was rated at 164. Bit of a shocker to me personally. I don't think I would have put it there. But nevertheless, If the Cap Fits was rated as 164. And then, both rated at 162, we've got this year's champion hurdle winner, Epitante, and Sam Spinner. Another one that kind of shocked me, I must admit. Again, if the cap fits, has to be in that 164 slot. It cannot be in either of the ones below. 
And equally, Sam Spinner and Epitanze, or Epitanz, depending on how you want to pronounce it, has to be in that 162 spot. If either of them are in that 164, that's a red cross. Again, Sam Spinner and Epitanze, they can be fourth or fifth. They're interchangeable, they both have the same rating, so don't mind which order you put them in. But if either of them are in that third spot, that's a nil. And equally, if, if the cap fits, he's in one of those bottom two spots, then that's also a nil. That's a wrong answer. Okay, this is where we took a break. However, we're going to power through whilst we get through these answers. The next few questions, we needed the most northerly and southerly race course from a list of four race courses. So question number 11. You were given four race courses. Catterick, Cartmel, Thirsk and Ripon. The most northerly is Catterick. And the furthest south is Ripon. One point for each. If you've got them mixed up and you've got Ripon as north or Catterick as south, that's a cross. We need them in those northerly and southerly mark brackets, as it were, respectively. If you've only got one correct, don't worry, that's one point. It's a maximum of two points for this. You've got Catterick and Ripon there. A point for each. Question number 12. Again, the list was... Newcastle, Kelso, Carlisle and Hexham. The most northerly is Carlisle, uh, the most northerly is Kelso even. And the most southerly is Carlisle. Kelso up there. Carlisle further south. Further south even than before. Again, a point for each one. Question 13. It's the four Scottish race courses. Perth, Musselburgh, Hamilton and Air. Perth is the furthest north. And air is the furthest south. Again, a point for each if you've got either of them correct. Question 14 included Leopardstown, Chester, Bangor on D, and Utoxeter. Question 14 you should have. The furthest north is actually Leopardstown. Throws a little bit of a curveball in there, I guess. with it being over the Irish Sea. And the furthest south is Utoxeter. So that's Leopardstown, the furthest north, and Utoxeter, the furthest south. Question 15. Furthest north is actually Windsor, and the furthest south is Epsom. The other two that were on that list in question 15 were Bath and Newbury. Those are the two that found themselves sandwiched in the middle. So Windsor for the north, Epsom further south. Again, a point for each one. And the last one of those sets of questions, question 16. The four were Brighton, Fontwell, Newton Abbott and Plumpton. Plumpton is the furthest north. And Newton Abbott is the furthest south. Again, once again, a point for each. If you've got either the north or the south or if you've got both and well done you you've got two points now the last eight questions were our pitch around questions you will see the faces of jockeys and trainers without their magical disguises so without further ado question 17 if i can bring this up now question 17 Perhaps one of the most popular men in the weighing room, Frankie Dettori. I think that was perhaps him winning the Oaks last year, I think, if my memory serves me correctly. So next to question 17, you should have Frankie Dettori. Question 18. You should have... Certain Dickie Johnson, Richard Johnson, picking up his, I think it was MBE. That's Richard Johnson for question 18. That should be your answer. Again, a point, one point for each of these. That's Richard Johnson for question 18. Question 19. James Doyle, the Doyler, flat jockey, I think he's won an abundance of grade ones, 
Uh, I think he's still. Does he still have the. Uh, I don't know. Do, does he still have a Godolphin job? I think it's a hunter. It's, it's been a while since we've seen some flat racing. But yeah, question 19. You should have the name of James Dial. Question 20. Question 20. And next to question 20, you should have Paisley Park's best friend, Aidan Coleman. That's Aidan Coleman. Yeah, perhaps one of the more trickier ones on these slides. But yeah, next to question 20, you should have the name of Jump Jockey, Aidan Coleman in there. Question 21. So where we got into the trainers. 21. You should have the name of a certain Mr. Twiston Davis Sr. That's Nigel Twiston Davis. He's there rocking his Paddington Bear coat. He's a very well-known Paddington Bear style coat. Nonetheless. But yes, question 21. You should have his name next to there. Nigel Twiston Davis. Jumps trainer with the likes of uh, Ballyandy. And many, many more. Complete brain fade. I couldn't think of any of the other horses. I think Ballyopsic is another one, isn't it? Might put my foot in it there. I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong. Question 22. Again, we're looking for the name of this person, David Pipe, uh, Mar David Pipe even. Sorry, I was watching a Martin Pipe documentary earlier this afternoon. I know, I'm very sad. But yes, David Pipe, his son. That's the name that you should have there written next to question number 22. David Pipe. Just two more left. 23, the penultimate answer. Should have the name of Mr. William Haggis. William Haggis. So Mr. Haggis should be what do you see in the answer slot next to question number 23. And last but not least, perhaps the most difficult one of the eight. This will be question number 24. Question number 24. Another trainer. Still on the flat. Mr. Kevin Ryan. Well, du well dual purpose already. Perhaps a little bit more dual purpose. I can't. Can't remember. I'm having a jumps runner for a while, actually. But no, he's probably more well known for his flat, flat exploits, definitely. But that's Kevin Ryan. So again, you should be rounding off that quiz with Kevin Ryan as your answer. Over to the wrong one then. So again, if you need any more answers, you can pause this video and rewind it and have a look. And make sure you've not missed any out. But you should have a score out of 40. Again, hopefully that's brought about a bit of enjoyment this evening. Let us know in the comments if it's something you enjoyed, if it's something you'd like to do again. We can certainly do one again next weekend. Absolutely fine and dandy, no problem at all. Much love to everyone who's given this support, the likes of Luke Elder, obviously all the team at PFTP. Um, some, uh, even some trainers have retweeted this and shared this on Facebook, some jockeys. You know who you are. Thank you very, very much for that. Obviously, if anyone else knows of any other quizzes that are going on, by all means, let me know. I'd love to get involved. 
But um, yeah, let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your support, all your likes, your tweets, your comments. Uh, give us a share. If you've got any friends who think they're really up for, up for doing this, you want to kind of fire it out, then by all means do so. This is going to go up as a video on our Facebook page, so you can watch it anytime. If you know anyone that wants to get involved, you obviously won't have seen this already. By all means, ping it to them. Test your friends, see whether or not you beat them. Again, thanks for supporting us. Thanks for watching this video. Any likes and shares, very much appreciated. Very welcome. Obviously, make sure you check us out at pixinthepaddock.co.uk. Follow us on Twitter at pixpaddock. Make sure you like our Facebook page. All the best. Have a brilliant rest of the Saturday evening. Go and pour another well-deserved pint. And all the best.